Good afternoon and good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tanis, and I'm a sales support specialist at Aspira Retirement Living. The team members I support are responsible for helping seniors make the important decision to enter the next stage of life, one we hope will start at Aspira Retirement Living. To take you through this presentation today, I am pleased to introduce you to Kaylee Massey. Kaylee is a visual artist and the passionate founder of Artful Enrichment. For over a decade, Kaylee has been dedicated to developing person-centered art programs for senior living communities. With hands-on industry experience, she's focused on enhancing artistic opportunities for seniors and highlighting the incredible benefits of arts engagement. Artful Enrichment provides online access to hundreds of creative programs for senior living communities across North America. Artful programs have been thoughtfully designed to foster artistic exploration, social connection, and creative confidence in both residents and recreation professionals. Also joining us today is Emily Geddes, National Director of Resident Engagement for our Retirement Division at Aspira. She oversees resident programs and related services. Her passionate team is dedicated to creating vibrant communities where residents have choices and can stay active and engaged at all stages of life. Now, on to the fun part. Kaylee is going to lead an interactive webinar that delves into the fascinating world of artistic creativity. Discover the numerous benefits of engaging in the arts and learn how to utilize art as a powerful avenue for self-expression. During this session, you will participate in a five-minute interactive activity highlighting the importance of individual interpretation. We will also help you to immerse yourself further in the world of art with a 20-minute step-by-step drawing session where you'll bring your creativity to life with a simple paper and pencil. It's time to unlock your creative side. As we move through the presentation today, please feel free to pop any questions you have into the chat. We look forward to hearing your questions and comments. Now over to you, Kaylee. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for having me on this webinar. I'm very excited to talk to everyone today about what it means to be creative and how to engage your creative side and really highlight some of the benefits of engaging in creative experiences. Now, before I get into the definition of creativity, I really wanna start by debunking this myth of people who say that I'm not creative because often one of the biggest barriers to engaging your creative side is not having that belief in yourself and believing that you're creative to begin with. So what I wanna do first is kind of let people know that just because you're not artistically inclined or just because you don't have a certain level of artistic skills, doesn't mean that you're uh, not creative. So a lot of the times when I ask people, show of hands, who's creative here, people either place themselves into one category, either I can't even draw a stick man, I'm not creative, or I somewhat dabble in the arts. But really um, having those artistic skills is not one and the same as being creative. Creativity is the translation of a novel idea into something tangible or experiential. It's outside of the box thinking, original problem solving, and it's the ability to connect unlikely ideas to pave new ways for new thinking. It's also the ability to take an unusual route to a familiar destination. And I'm gonna be giving you some examples of creativity as well. And then it really does require a lot of employing your imagination and opening up your mind to new possibilities. So at the end of the day, creativity is a way of thinking. Here are some examples of what it means to be creative. And these, a lot of these are non-arts-based examples. So one good example is problem solving in the workplace. Engineers, scientists, business, business professionals, often use creativity to find innovative solutions to very complex problems. And this can involve reimagining processes, developing new technologies, or devising unconventional strategies. A great example is also in the recreation activity professional world, which is one of the most creative um, positions because it requires the ability to adapt um, programming to meet different experience levels, skill levels, interests, 
and really overcome so many different types of barriers to participation and make an inclusive engagement environment. So this requires a mass amount of creativity on a daily basis. Another area which has a lot of creativity is in cooking and the culinary arts. They are abundant with creative moments. So chefs and home cooks alike all showcase their creativity in the kitchen by experimenting with flavors and textures and how they present their dishes, um, creating new recipes or putting unique twists on traditional recipes are also forms of creativity. I'm sure many of you have been um, in your home and you're cooking and you find that your recipe calls for something that you don't have. So you have to pull something unusual from your cupboard to um, kind of substitute in, and that's a that's a moment of creativity. Another area that employs creative thinking is in the scientific research and education world. Scientists use creativity to formulate hypotheses. Um, they use it to design experiments and interpret different results. The process of discovery often involves thinking creatively to explore uncharted territory. Teachers and professors especially employ creativity in the design of their lesson plans and how they can adapt their lessons and their teaching styles to meet the unique needs, abilities, and interests of their students. Some other everyday examples are um, being able to mend things with unconventional tools. If you're planning events, whether it's for your job or personal life, that takes a lot of creativity. Uh, photography, whether it's a camera, a film camera, or just your phone camera, that takes a lot of creativity, deciding how to crop something. Um, experimenting with your fashion or how you decorate your home, these are all moments of creativity. Now, the reason why I wanted to kind of share all these examples is because likely the likelihood is that everyone can identify with one or many of those examples, which means that on a daily basis, you're likely having these creative moments. So then hopefully you can start to identify as a creative person and open yourself up to new opportunities. Now, I'd like to highlight the benefits of creativity and there are so many, so I'm only gonna cover a few of them. Um, but one of the, the key benefits is it enhances our problem solving skills. So create, creative experiences encourage outside of the box thinking, as I mentioned. It also fosters um, innovative approaches to problem solving and gives us the ability to adapt and keep an open mind, which can be um, really helpful in challenging situations or whether that's professionally or in our personal life as well. Creative experiences can also have huge benefits on our overall mental health and well-being. Creativity is a powerful outlet for self-expression and stress relief. Engaging in our creative side and activities can help to reduce anxiety, it can boost our mood, and it can also provide a sense of accomplishment, which contributes to our overall mental well-being. It also, prevent, it also promotes mindfulness. So we were speaking recently with a group of older adults who were using some herbal programs and they all expressed a very similar feeling of ease and hyper-focus when they were creating. In this case, they were making art and they all said that they felt very present and in the moment and it seemed like everything else around them, whether it was noise or or um, troubles or issues that were going on in their outside life seemed to just kind of disappear for that moment in time and they became engaged in this almost flow-like state. So that can have really powerful uh, positive impacts on our whole mental health and well-being. Another way in which creativity can benefit us is it can increase our self-confidence. So successfully navigating the creative process, whether it's completing an art project, solving a complex puzzle, 
or presenting an original idea, it can boost our self-esteem and our self-confidence, which is also helping to improve our self-efficacy and our belief in oneself. This can also inspire self-reflection and improve our understanding of who we are and, and our wants and desires as well. A really important um, benefit that I, I, th I think is um, very key to highlight here is it can enhance our communication skills. Creative expression often involves conveying ideas um, in very compelling ways a lot of the times, whether it's through writing, through visual arts, through dance or other mediums, it can improve our communication skills and the ability to convey our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings. This is particularly important for people who may be struggling to communicate in traditional ways, um, whether they're struggling to communicate verbally um, or through writing, maybe the arts or another form, or maybe singing or dancing is a way for them to still express themselves and outlet those thoughts and feelings and emotions in a new alternative way. Creativity can also cultivate resilience. It involves a lot of risk taking. There's a lot of vulnerability to being creative. Um, today, people may feel a little vulnerable when we're doing this art project, but you'll notice that when you come through on the other side, you're gonna leave feeling much more resilient. And again, you're gonna have that improved self-confidence, hopefully in yourself, um, if you kind of push through that discomfort sometimes. And this resilience can be a valuable asset in facing life's challenges with a very positive and adaptive mindset. Um, on the health side of the benefits is it can help to build our cognitive reserve. Participating in intellectually stimulating creative activities may contribute to building cognitive resilience against degenerative brain diseases, such as different forms of dementia. So this is a, a really um, key takeaway, I think, for a lot of people who are looking to strengthen their cognitive reserve um, having those new experiences and learning something new, whether it's through the arts or some other um, outlet, can help to um, strengthen our brain against degenerative diseases. Now, I wanted to talk about how can we engage our creative side and help to unleash that creativity. And we're gonna be doing it a little bit today during our um, exercises, our drawing exercises, but here are some helpful tips that you can utilize um, at home or wherever it is that you may be. Uh, so one of the ways is to follow your curiosity, embrace your curiosity, cultivate a curious mindset, so ask questions, explore new interests, and be open to the unknown. Open-mindedness is a common theme throughout um, creativity. Often I tell people just to keep an open mind. And then if, they, if they're open-minded, they're much more likely to um, absorb that experience and the benefits of it. Another um, tip is to diversify your experiences. So break up your routine, try something new, um, go to an unfamiliar place, meet new people, and expose yourself to diverse experiences to have a rich um, pool of inspiration. And then the third one of the six is to set aside some creative time. So scheduling and creative time, creativity is like a muscle. So if you, it, it takes some practice and persistence to build that muscle and that, um, that confidence in your creative abilities. So by setting aside some time for it, then you're gonna feel more comfortable. It's gonna come more naturally to you. If possible, you can designate a space for it where you feel most inspired, or maybe have like a sketchbook if you want to write, if you're feeling inspired or draw or sketch, whatever it may be, just setting aside a space or a time for that act is really helpful. 
Another way to unleash our creativity is to collaborate with others. Brainstorming, collaborating with others can help to bring fresh perspectives and ignite ideas that you might not have considered on your own. A lot of the times when we're making art with other people, it's helpful to see how other people are interpreting a project and you can learn a lot from seeing how, and we'll see today how other people um, infuse their perspective in their experience. And then number five, I really want to um, highlight is embracing our mistakes or quote unquote mistakes. Creativity often involves trial and error. So try to remove the fear of making mistakes and just kind of go with it and turn it into a, a happy accident moment instead of putting so much pressure on yourself to produce something specific. Try to lean into those moments. And then lastly, give yourself some permission to play and explore and experiment. This is something that we're often um, taught when we're children to just kind of explore and play and learn. Um, but as we age, sometimes that kind of falls away and, and, and becomes lower on our priority scale. So creativity thrives in very playful spaces. Allow yourself to experiment without fear of judgment. And you'll notice that it opens up the door to unconventional thinking and, and innovative ideas. So I'm gonna pass it over to Emily. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kaylee. I do have my pencil and my paper ready for our drawing exercise. But just before that, I'm thrilled to share with you today our commitment to creativity and the importance we place on fostering a vibrant and fulfilling lifestyle for all of our residents. Just like Artful Enrichment, we at Aspira understand that the pursuit of art and creative expression is not bound by age. It's a lifelong journey that continues to enrich our lives. Let's take a quick moment to draw parallels between the broader discussion we've had on artistic creativity and our unique brand of programming. Just as we explore the numerous benefits of engaging in the arts, we encourage our residents to embark on a journey of self-discovery through Explore by Aspira. Next slide, please, Kaylee. So in line with today's theme, we invite each resident to immerse themselves in new hobbies and passions. At Aspira, we believe that retirement is not a time to slow down, but an opportunity to embrace new horizons and explore some uncharted territories. In our Explore programming, we emphasize the concept of lifelong learning, whether it's trying your hand at painting, learning a musical instrument, or delving into the world of literature, we offer a diverse range of activities that stimulate the mind and cultivate a sense of curiosity. It's about fostering an environment where the pursuit of knowledge and skills is a continuous and rewarding experience. Creativity is not just a solitary endeavor, it's a shared experience that builds connections. Our Explore programming is designed to bring people together, fostering a sense of community and camaraderie. Retirement is a time to rediscover or unlock hidden joy and fulfillment. Our commitment is to provide a platform for self-discovery, allowing you to unearth talents you may not have known existed. Next slide, please, Kaylee. As we continue our exploration into the realm of artistic creativity at Aspira, I'm excited to share how our tailored programs cater to diverse artistic journeys. At the core of our commitment is the recognition that each individual's path is unique, and our programs are crafted to enhance creativity, relieve stress, and foster a profound sense of accomplishment. Let's start with art, an expressive avenue that, to Kaylee's point, transcends boundaries and really speaks to the soul. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just beginning your artistic journey, our art programs offer a canvas for self-expression. From painting to sculpture, these activities serve a dual purpose. Not only do they enhance creativity, but they also provide a therapeutic outlet, relieving stress and promoting a sense of accomplishment. Next, we delve into the harmonious world of music. Our music programs are designed not just to entertain, but to enrich lives. 
engaging in musical programs, whether it's learning to play an instrument or participating in a choir, has shown to boost cognitive function, promote emotional well-being, and foster connections within the community. It's a powerful medium that creates a symphony of shared experiences, if you would. Finally, we encourage residents to embark on personal projects, tailored endeavors that reflect individual passions and interests. Whether it's crafting, gardening, or writing, these projects stimulate personal fulfillment, encourage self-expression, and offer a tangible sense of purpose. By investing time in projects that resonate with personal aspirations, you'll find a source of joy, accomplishment, and a deeper connection to yourself. Next slide, please, Kaylee. I want to leave you with the idea that life is your canvas and the possibilities for finding new hobbies and interests are endless. Here are a few points to inspire you. Start by exploring what brings you joy and curiosity. It could be painting, writing, or trying a new craft. Share your hobbies and interests with the community. Teach, learn, and celebrate the diversity of interests. You can even stop by your local Aspira community and share it with us. Connect with like-minded individuals. From book clubs to art workshops, there's something for everyone out there and wonderful company to be had. Acknowledge and celebrate every step in your hobby journey, whether it's finishing your first project or mastering a new skill. Let's continue to explore, connect, and celebrate the beauty of life filled with diverse and fulfilling interests. Thank you for being a part of our creative journey today. And Kaylee, back to you for a drawing exercise. Thank you, Emily. Those were great insights and very apt. I'm just going to switch over here. So we are going to start off with a fun draw drawing exercise to get everyone warmed up and to try to remove that pressure to produce and place the focus more on the experience of making an artwork rather than the final product or the final piece. So I want you guys to have, this one's just going to be a quick, um, only take a few minutes. So if you only have one piece of, piece of paper, just use the back of your paper. And the way this exercise is going to work, I am going to um, give you several prompts to draw something. And we're all gonna be doing it, but not showing each other. And then at the end, I'll show you what I created. So I'm gonna be going step-by-step step through a project, but you won't be able to see what I'm creating. At the end, I'll show you what I drew and yours may look absolutely nothing like it and that's okay. This is not, the purpose of this is just to have some fun and really focus on our individual interpretation. So grab your drawing tool and your paper and you're just gonna have to trust me and listen and, and go with your gut, go with your instincts here. So start your drawing by drawing a circle, a large circle on one side of your paper. Now the tricky thing with this art exercise is that you can't ask any questions and there's definitely always the instinct to want to know where to put it exactly, but you just have to trust your creative instincts here. Now, the second thing that I want you to draw is a large oval attached to the circle. Now, attached to the oval, I want you to draw four rectangles. Now inside the large circle, draw a smaller circle.
And next, attached to your large circle, draw two triangles. Next, inside your large circle, draw two dots. We've only got two more steps. The next step is to draw two short vertical lines inside your smallest circle. And then for the last step, draw a small S on the opposite end of the oval from the, cir the circle. Now, everyone's going to look completely different. So don't worry if it just looks like a pile of shapes, that's okay. But I'll show you what mine look like here. This is when, when I've done this in the past, this is how other people's have turned out. Some of them have completely looked even different than this, but this is what I was drawing here. You can kind of see it there. So this is just a fun exercise, really just to place the emphasis on just, this is all about having fun and enjoying yourself, exploring your creative side and Really, there should be no pressure. Just take all that pressure away and that take that kind of mentality into this next portion of the drawing exercise where we will walk through a step-by-step -step drawing of a hummingbird. So I'm going to stop sharing the presentation here. And everyone can see me okay? All right, so we now that we're kind of loosened up and we're getting the creative juices flowing, now we're gonna do a step-by-step -step drawing of a hummingbird. Now, if you haven't done something like this before, that's okay. We are gonna move through this at a mediocre pace. And whenever you're drawing something like an animal, it's always very helpful, like we just kind of did, to break it down into shapes. So I'm gonna do that and we will see how these turn out. So I'm gonna move this to the side for now. Grab your piece of paper. If you worked on one side of it, you can flip it over and use the back. And everything that I'm gonna say is just a suggestion. If you have a, a better way of doing something or you're just kind of going with the flow, you can always just skip any of the steps and yeah, do whatever you think is best. So we're gonna start off by drawing the hummingbird's head. And the head is going to be somewhere in, on one side of the paper in, in like the upper area, but we wanna leave some room for the beak. So we're just gonna draw a small circle, slightly to one side. I'm gonna draw it kind of lightly at first, but then I'll draw it darker so you can see it a bit better. Try to keep your lines really light so that it's easy to erase. I'm gonna draw mine a little darker so that it translates onto the screen here. So we're starting off by drawing the head in this small circular shape here. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the body of the hummingbird. And the body is going to be almost like a, a long oval shape, but we're going to create it on a slight angle attached to our head. So I like to just kind of hover my hand over the shape that I'm planning to make. And then once I feel comfortable with it, I'm going to start to sketch it out. 
And we want to place it on an angle. So it almost looks like a, a bubble eye in that bubble font. And the nice thing is, is we're using pencils. Maybe if you have, a, if you're not using pencil, that's okay. But you can always erase as you go and adjust things as you go. There's no sense of commitment here. Now we want to connect the body and the head to make it more cohesive in one shape. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the top of the head, and I'm just going to draw a curved line that goes around and attaches to the body. So this is kind of like the neck, the back of the neck here. Again, try to keep your lines really light and loose, and then that way it's much easier to erase them. A fun fact about hummingbirds is they are apparently the smallest migrating bird. And most of them weigh less than a nickel, which I thought was really shocking. <laughs> now for the bottom of the neck, we're going to also connect the head, but I'm gonna, instead of doing a curved line, almost like a straight line, I'm gonna curve it inwards towards the center just a slight curve in. And it's these little subtleties that will make it look more like a hummingbird. Now, the next thing that we wanna add is the iconic long beak of our hummingbird. And it's gonna come out right from the middle of the head. So if it's helpful, you can divide the, the circle of the head in half, just really lightly draw a halfway line and then extend it outside of the body. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw mine a little darker so you can see it. And you almost want it to be almost double the width of the head. It depends how much room you have on your paper. So this is going to be the center line that separates the top and bottom portion of the beak. So once you're happy with it, you can darken it a little bit. And then now we're going to create the top portion of the beak. just by drawing a line that starts at the head, a little bit above that line, and then it comes down on an angle until it meets the tip of the beak. So it may take a couple kind of goes at this. And don't be afraid of using your eraser. <laughs> There's no shame in it. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom portion of the beak. So you can just do the same kind of shape, almost so it creates this kind of cone-like shape, really long and narrow. The hummingbird's beaks are quite thin so that they can get into the nectar of the flower.
So now it's starting to kind of look like a hummingbird, maybe. So obviously it has no wings, it's just floating in midair. But this is this is really a great example of how when you break something down in shapes, it will start out quite abstract, but then eventually as you start to kind of alter those shapes and add some of the details, it will start to hopefully resemble the, the object or item that you're trying to create. Grab your eraser and we're gonna do a little bit of erasing to tidy some things up. I'm going to erase the lines that separate the body and the head to make that one shape. And then you can also erase if you'd like, I'll show you kind of the option here. If you want part of the beak to be coming into the, the head a little bit, you're gonna want to erase the line that separates the beak and the head, just ever so slightly. So now we've kind of amalgamated all the shapes into one. Now, if you want to add that little beak detail, I'm going to draw an arrow that points inward from the top of the beak to the bottom of the beak. Just very kind of, doesn't need to be too big. I'll draw it a little darker so you can see it. And then you wanna connect that middle beak line with the arrow. Now for the eye, the eye is gonna sit slightly above the center of the beak. And you can maybe place one and then see if it works. And it's quite small. I'm just gonna draw a circle for it. And something to notice whenever you're looking at a painting or drawing, often to bring in an animal or a person to life, you leave a little bit of white in their eye. And that's, you can actually see it in my eyes maybe right now. Um, you can see if there's a little bit of white in their eye, it brings them to life because that's the reflection of the light around them reflecting off their eyes. So that's a good tip if your animal or person is looking a little lifeless. <laughs> now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to begin adding the wings. And for the wings, they're gonna come up quite a bit, almost starting from inside the body around where the neck kind of is. And you wanna draw an arcing line that goes up towards the top corner of the paper. I'm gonna lower mine a little bit here, actually give myself a little bit more space. So I'm just going to angle this line, and this is going to be the top of the wing. So you can see if you want, you can move it down a little further if you want it, the neck to be a little longer. But we're just drawing the top of that wing first off. And then to get into like a bit of a more sketchy textural portion of the drawing, we're gonna add the feathers at the end of the wing. And the shape is gonna come, it's gonna start at the top of the wing and it's gonna come out and then inward. So I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna create the feathers of the wing by drawing these hook-like J lines. So starting at 
the tip where I left off. I'm going to create a hook line and bring it in. Hook line, bring it in. And I'm going to keep doing that until I come all the way in to the body. If it's helpful to have a scrap piece of paper beside you just to practice some of those marks, that's always um, something that's worth doing if, if you're struggling with getting the mark making where you want it to be. You can extend these, you can make them pointier. There are a lot of different types of hummingbirds, so feel free to be experimental with it as well. Now you're gonna to want to erase the body line because right now the wing and the body are kind of competing with each other. So to push the wing in front of the body, just erase the portion of the body that goes through the wing and you'll see how that wing comes forward. Now, if you'd like to add a wing behind that one so you can see both, you don't have to add that. Um, this is kind of just a bonus step. If you'd like to do that, you're just gonna draw a similar arcing line from where the, the neck and the other wing meet. You're gonna come up to create the top of that wing. But again, if you don't want to add that, if you don't like the look of it, just skip this step. And then we want to add the ends of that wing as well, just similar to how we've done the other one by making those J hook like marks. But we want to stop as soon as we hit that other wing because you really want this wing to be in front here. And you can always add more details too. If you wanted to add some more kind of layers of feathers, definitely feel free to do that. The next thing I'm gonna show you how to create is the tail. And the tail is going to, we're gonna extend the body a little bit by um, drawing an arrow-like shape at the end of the body. almost like a little torpedo. And then erasing this line to make them one shape again. Now to make the tail feathers of our bird, I'm just going to draw long looping lines at the very end of the tip of the tail here. So the end of this little arrow, I'm gonna draw long looping lines like this. And I want them to get a little shorter as they near the front of the body. So maybe,
And to attach those feathers to the body, I'm just going to erase this line that keeps them separated so that it becomes more like one shape. So they're not disconnected. You may need to do a little bit of touching up after you erase, but that's okay. Now, the last thing we're going to add before we may just do a little bit of an outline for where the um, colors will be if you want to add color later on. But the last thing I want to show you how to add is the little feet that just hang from the body here. So the way I like to do them is just to make two sets of three little hook-like or C-like shapes, almost like little ha half moons. And I will try to bring this a little closer for you. And you know what? If you don't want to add the feet, if you're not into the look, you don't have to add them. But if you do, it's almost, yeah, like little two sets of three half moon kind of shapes. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, just if you wanted to eventually make this into a ruby throated um, hummingbird, I just want to show you how to map out where the coloring will go. So for the throat, the red throat, it goes from the beak, the center of the beak, kind of up to the eye, down and outlines that neck area. So I like to just kind of use a broken line just to show where that shape is. Maybe it comes down a little further depending on your shape. And then for the green portion, for the green back, you're just gonna start where you left off with the wing on the inside and do a very kind of furry line all the way down to the inside of the tail. If you'd like, you can add a little bit of that line going along the top of the wing that you might see, or you can just kind of leave it as is and do this with color later on. If you've done this on watercolor paper, it makes for a really beautiful watercolor. You can make a little note to yourself with the colors if you need. But I think we're gonna leave it there. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed the drawing process and learned something along the way. That was awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I got caught up on doing my lines <laughs> and forgot to come back. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, it it looks like a bird. I'm actually going to show my daughter because she's a drawer and she's going to be like, oh my God, you drew a bird, mom. I did. <laughs> I did. I don't know if I could ever do it again, but I did it now. Uh, I'm going to see if anybody has any questions. If they do, they could put them into the chat right now. Not seen anything. I hope everybody enjoyed this as much as I did. And I feel very relaxed and ready to get on with my day, I think. And I'm going to go and show a bunch of people what I drew. I'm very <laughs> proud. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, I, do, I think that's, I think we've done it. I think we're it. Perfect. I'm Thank you so much for having me. I know we have an art room here at the site of, at the community I'm at today. So I think I'm going to go and find some colors and put something in for my lunchtime. Perfect. And if people are looking for color references, look for a ruby throated hummingbird. We get a lot of those in my backyard and I love them so much. I see them all the time. 
They're beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. And thank you, Emily, for uh, contributing back there as well. And thank you to everyone who came and drew today. And thank you from Aspira. And thank you from Kaylee as well. Have a great thank day. You.